welcome back to Gun. What the heck? To Gun. So it's a shitty rainy day today, um, and it's been a little while since I've made a video, about a week, but this one's a quite a neat one. It's one I've wanted to make for a while, but I needed to sort of get a few expressions ironed out on some of my other videos, for example, specifically the inverse hyperbolic functions in their logarithmic forms, which is going to very loosely come into play at the end of this video, but uh, this is a very, very interesting, cool little number that I'm going to share with you today, which is sort of like the pi for parabolas, hence the stupid name of this video. And it is called the universal parabolic constant, and it is much like pi for a circle, it's a ratio of one portion of a parabola to another portion of the parabola in a way that is constant for every parabola. And so that sort of tells you that they are all similar, that they all have this universal constant related to them over the same portion of every parabola. Because they are all actually similar, they each have an eccentricity of one, which means they are the same shape. I'm going to show you how to derive this constant and I'm going to show you how it's related to three different conic sections based on these logarithmic forms that I've derived before. And we're also going to get to do some fun, like, integral calculus, just solving a cool integral. So let's take a look at what we have, the universal parabolic constant. Okay, so today we're going to discuss the universal parabolic constant. It's essentially pi for parabolas, because circles and parabolas are the only two conic sections that are all similar to one another. They have the same eccentricity, they are all scalable to be congruent to another object in its class, quite literally all the same shape, and so we can come up with a similar sort of constant relating to quantities uh, slash parts of a parabola. So we're going to do a quick review of the different portions of a parabola. So. Quickly, we know that any old quadratic equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, is going to generate a parabola in the xy plane. It is a quadratic, gra gra uh, blah, 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 a quadratic graph, a quadratic graph. And you will find that the terms b, the b and c numbers have only to do with locating the parabola in the plane. It has nothing to do with the actual shape. For example, adding c simply moves the uh, parabola up and down by c. And b has to do with essentially its position left and right. The only thing that has any effect on the stretched out shapiness of the parabola is the coefficient of a. And the only thing a can't be is zero, because if a were zero, we would just have a linear graph anyway. It wouldn't be quadratic. So a can't be zero, but it can be anything else that you want it to be. And the only thing that determines the shape of the parabola is a. So we can sort of, without loss of generality, take any parabola in the plane and move it so that its vertex is on the origin and it's opening up without changing its shape, right? Just move it around until it's there where we want it to be. Because that deals with all the B and C problems, right? Now we're just being, the shape is simply being determined by A. Another thing that I won't prove is that A can also be written as 1 over 4F. Because F is essentially, if we've positioned the parabola so that it is on the origin, like so, where this is y equals a times x, then f is the point of the, the y-coordinate of the focus of the parabola. So this point is 0f. Okay, I hope that's clear. Uh, this point right here is 0f. It is the focus of the parabola, and the focus has very interesting characteristics. If you have vertical lines falling into the parabola, they will always reflect at the exact angle that they hit the parabola and they will always go into the focus every single time. It's pretty amazing. So even if they drop down below the focus, the angle will shoot it back up into the focus. That's why um, satellite dishes are made out of parabolas spun around through 3D space called paraboloids. It's a surface of rotation because parabolas have this property that if vertical lines um, descend into it, they will always bounce into the same spot, which is exactly what you want in a satellite dish if you're trying to collect information. Um, so it's 1 over 4f, which means this can also be written as x squared divided by 4f. If you draw a horizontal line through the focus, as in parallel to the uh, x-axis through the focus, you get something called, funnily enough, but I can, I can say it because, because this is an educational channel. So this thing that goes through the focus and has, so it's, it's y equals f, right? But it's, it's, it's only going from the point that it intersects the parabola to the other point that it intersects the parabola through the focus. And this blue thing is called the lattice 
rectum. I imagine this Latin word has some other usage uh, beyond expulsion of waste. But uh, so what we need to do is we need to identify what these two points are. If we know that this function is defined as x squared over 4f, we know that these two points have a height of f, which means some x that we're plugging in is giving us f on the other side. We want to set this equal to f and solve for the two solutions that give us these two points here, right? Because we want to know this distance here. We want to eventually find the arc length of the parabola between those two points. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase this funny name and we're going to set this equal to f so that we can solve for when <clears throat> it intersects the parabola. So we're letting f equal x squared over 4f. This is obviously not too difficult. We multiply the 4f over and we get x squared equals 4f squared, which is simply 2 times f squared, which implies that x is equal to plus or minus 2f. So this point here is minus 2f, and this point here is positive 2f. So whatever integral we're going to do to get the arc length of the parabola, we're going to be doing it from negative 2f to positive 2f, OK? We just need one more concept, two more concepts, actually. We need to know what the directrix is. And so the directrix is quite easy. The directrix is, this, is just this imaginary line that is on the outside of the parabola that is as far below the vertex as the focus is above the vertex. So in theory, this should have been the same length as this, so these should be the same lengths. And this distance here from the focus down to the directrix is called the focal parameter. And essentially, what we're going to do, as I'm going to explain what the directrix is, but for the sake of uh, explaining what the universal parabolic constant is, the universal parabolic constant is going to be the ratio of the arc length that is subtended by the lattice rectum and divided by the focal parameter, and that will give us a constant value. You can imagine that as the parabola gets bigger and bigger and the focus gets farther and farther from the x-axis, that this arc length will go to infinity. So will, in fact, the focal parameter, because the directrix will move down as much as the focus moves up, because they are always the same distance away from the vertex. That's also another thing about parabolas, is they are the set of all points that are equidistant from the point that is the focus and the line that is the directrix. For example, what I'm trying to say is this distance here to this point is exactly the same as this vertical distance here to the directrix. I know they don't look like it in the drawing, that's because I didn't draw it very well, but the point is you can define and produce a parabola by, set it, by saying, I want to know all the points that are the same distance from some point and some line, and you will define a parabola every single time, which is to say another reason why they might be similar, because that tells you nothing about how how uh, far away the dot and the line are, so you always have to make the same shape, right? These things don't have any size comparison, really. Lines are infinitely thin, points are infinitely small. So you could put them anywhere in arbitrary space and define a parabola based on them. So they really are all um, similar. And so all we're going to do is, now that we have all of our definitions, right, we have the arc length that is subtended by what we call the lattice rectum, and we are going to divide it by the focal parameter, which is 2 times f right? Because it's f to the vertex, and then it's f down to the directrix again. So the focal parameter is 2f, and we're going to be dividing by it. So we're going to have 1 over 2f, all right? And that's actually a really convenient thing to say you want to relate it to, because we're going to end up with a very nice cancellation in this integral. And so what we're going to do is we're going to simply now take this integral that I said we're going to do and, and produce the universal parabolic constant, which is the same for every single parabola. So now that we've figured this out, this is our function, by the way, we're going to talk about arc length now. So arc length is defined as the arc length of a function from a to b is the integral from a to b of the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, and that's it. That's the arc length. But this isn't a very nice form to be put in. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide out, I'm going to factor out dx, which is going to divide both of the things under the radical by dx squared. So this is going to be equal to, so I'm dividing by dx squared, so that becomes 1, and this becomes dy squared over dx squared, or dy over dx squared. And because I factored out dx, a dx is now on the outside. So what we actually have is a way to represent arc length very, very simply. It's the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of our function squared, dx. And where does this come from? Well, if we imagine some point, some section of curve, so we're, this is just some curve in like local, like I've zoomed into the curve. If you want to measure the arc length, which is to say some straight, some portion of it here, if it's very, very tiny, we can approximate it with a line segment, like a really tiny line segment. And essentially what we do is we simply take dx, which is the change in the x-coordinate, 
and dy, which is the change in the y coordinate, and treat it as a right triangle, right? So this is dx down here, this is dy, and this is considered ds for segment. I don't know, maybe, I have no idea why it's uh, s, maybe for subtend. And essentially, you apply the Pythagorean theorem, which is the case, right? Because ds is simply going to be the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, which is exactly what I had here originally. And then I simply just cosmetically changed it so it's in the form of an integral that we're actually used to. So what this actually originally was the integral from a to b of just ds, right? If ds is this portion of the uh, curve, and you're simply just adding up all the little portions of the curve, curve by using the Pythagorean theorem on a very tiny infinitesimal scale. So this is a perfectly valid definition for arc length, and so we're going to apply it to the parabola here. So what we're going to do is we're specifically going to take our function is x squared uh, over 4f. So what, because I need actually the derivative in that thing, I'm going to tell you what the derivative is. Well, y prime is simply the derivative of this. 4f is a constant. So the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x, and we're still dividing by 4f. So we're going to get 2x over 4f, which is the same as x over 2f. So this is the derivative of the function y equals a times x squared, or x squared over 4f, where a is 1 over 4f. So this is the derivative we're going to need. So I'm going to erase that now. And the arc length from, from negative 2f to 2f is simply this then. Negative 2f to 2f times this of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared. And we just found out that the derivative is x over 2f, so that's very nice and we're squaring it, dx, right? This is the arc length from negative 2f to 2f. But remember, we're also dividing by the focal parameter, which is the distance from the vertex straight down to the directrix. And that's one focal distance plus another focal distance. So we're dividing by 1 over 2f. And now you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 2fs in here. So there's definitely going to be some fantastic substitution that we can do to make this much easier. What you can do is immediately jump to a trigonometric substitution. But before I do that, I'm going to do one more substitution in between just to sort of evoke what I want to, what, what I want you to think of with regards to all these different conic sections. Because here's one conic section, right? It's the parabola. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let t equal x over 2f, which implies that dt equals 1 over 2f, or dx over 2f, right? Which is really, really convenient, because now all the 2f's go away. Because we can replace this with t, we can replace this with 1, and this with negative 1, and then dx over 2f is right here. So this integral actually turns out to be equal to the integral from negative 1 to 1 of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt, which seems awfully simple, right? It seems really, really simple to try and evaluate. Um, you actually need an understanding of hyperbolas for this, because if you recall, x squared minus y squared equals 1 describes the unit hyperbola that can be solved with the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine as the parametrizations of x and y. We've been over this in the fact that we've studied hyperbolic functions enough to know that they do solve this equation. Interestingly, if you want a cool function of y, what you might want to do is switch those two. So we have y squared minus x squared equals 1, which instead of being this hyperbola like we're all used to, would instead draw the almost complement, complementary hyperbola like that. So you're going to have the upper branch, which is now a function, and if you solve for y, you get y equals the square root of 1 plus x squared, which is exactly what you see right there, right? And that's going to be this function here. If you did negative square root of 1 plus x squared, you would get the bottom branch. But essentially what this is saying is that the universal parabolic constant that we're solving for is essentially going to be equal to the area under the unit hyperbola from negative 1 to 1, right? From negative 1 to 1. When you switch x and y from what they normally are and you do y squared minus x squared, you're going to get this area under here. And we're essentially going to solve for that now. So I wanted to just show you that there's clearly a connection between the parabola and the hyperbola in this sense. Um, but what we're going to do is not try to solve this uh, integral because it's rather annoying. We're going to do a trigonometric substitution, which theoretically you could have done from here and just let x over 2f be the thing we're going to do. I just wanted to sort of evoke the hyperbolic relationship here. So what we're going to do now is let t equal tangent of theta, which tells me that dt is equal to secant squared theta d theta. Right? This is just basic calculus 1 derivatives, right? These are perfectly normal. Um, well, I'd say calc 2 is the trigonometric substitution, but the derivatives are calc 1. So that should be okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the image now and sort of 
work my way down the board because we have a very interesting integral to try and solve now. And let's see, so we have the integral, I'm going to rewrite it up here, so we have the integral from negative 1 to 1 of the square root, by the way I'm going to call this uh, p, the universal parabolic constant, so we have that the integral from negative 1 to 1 of the square root of 1 plus t squared dt, now we're doing a substitution where t is the tangent of theta, so dt becomes secant squared d theta. This is going to be equal to, t is starts off at negative 1, so what would we need to plug into tangent of theta to get negative 1 as an output? Well, if you recall from the unit circle, we need to plug in theta equals negative pi over 4. So, negative pi over 4. And what would we, how do we make t equal to 1? Well, it's going to be the negative of that, right? Because tangent is odd. So theta would have to be positive pi over 4, right? pretty easy. And now we're simply going to replace t with the substitution we're making, which is tangent of theta. And so this is equal to the square root of 1 plus tangent theta squared. And now dt gets replaced with the differential that we have here, which is secant squared d theta. But what is this? We definitely recognize this. This is one of the Pythagorean identities. So we've proven many times that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. But we can also divide through by cosine squared, and we get that this implies that tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared, right? All we did was divide by cosine squared, and we got this thing here. 1 plus tangent squared is the same thing, which means that 1 plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. And we're doing, taking the square root of secant squared, which means that this thing here, the square root of 1 plus tan theta squared, is equal to the secant of theta. So what we've got here is that the universal parabolic constant is equal to the integral from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4 of secant cubed of theta, d theta. So we have to solve the integral of secant cubed to find out what the universal parabolic constant is. This is good because it's very, very simple little integral in the sense that it's very simple to state. Uh, so I'm going to erase what's on the bottom now. And what else I'm going to do is I'm going to recognize that if I plug in any number into secant, secant is an even function. So integer powers of an even function will also be even, which is to say that this is equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of secant cubed theta d theta. So I don't have to write pi over 4 twice. It is equal to this because it is even. So this is the p we're solving for. So I'm going to show that this is equal to a specific value, which means the original integral that we started with, which was the integral over the arc length of the parabola divided by the focal parameter, is equal to this fixed number, which we will solve for now. So what we're really doing is asking, what is the antiderivative of secant cubed? Quick little thing, this channel has an Instagram, so it is at what the hectagon, of course, and it has a Twitter also. So this is Instagram, and of course this is Twitter, and it is of course naturally, of course naturally, naturally, of course, also what the hectagon, at what the hectagon. Nope, at the hectagon. Oh, gone. Oh, can't spell today. Okay. Hectogon, and my email is the incorrectly spelled what the hect agon, why spell check before you make the email, right, that you can't then change, at gmail.com. Now, all of these are in the description if you don't want to have to somehow watch the video and pause it and actually write it down. Um, along with other Instagram, Twitter, YouTube accounts that me and my friend Bill run. Uh, he does one for DND. We together stream on Mixer under the moniker of Fred Wood Live. So check the description for other stuff. This is just for my channel. This is my Instagram, at whatthehectogon, Twitter, at whatthehectogon, and email, at whatthehectagon, because I spelled it wrong when I made the email, and now I can't change it. So that's the, uh, that's the stuff. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye. Uh,